For the main body of the watering can, we will need all of the pieces that are listed under the section labeled can. And I should say at this point that anytime you see this sheet on the screen, that don't look at the measurements that are here because sometimes during construction I change them. So you should always refer to the instructions for the correct measurements. So I have my pieces cut out and let's get started. To put the body of the can together we need to do a little preliminary cutting on the four pieces that are labeled can angled side, can angled sides. And so these pieces are have been cut at an inch and a half wide, they're eight inches tall, but at the top we only want them to be three quarters of an inch, so they'll angle in from the top to the bottom. The bottom stays at an inch and a half, and the top will center a three quarter inch measurement. So I'll just take my centering ruler and put it on here and then if we want three quarters of an inch in total we'll measure out three eighths of an inch from center on the left and three eighths of an inch from center on the right and then I'll take these two tick marks and connect them to the bottom corners once I've connected my tick marks you'll see I have these two angled lines and I will use my craft knife and a cutting edge and cut off these two pieces. And I'll repeat that for the other three pieces. Now that I have my four angled sides cut, just put two of them to the side and I'll bring in one of the can front or back pieces, doesn't matter, they're both the same, and I'll put an angled side on the left and the right of that front and back piece. And then I'll use one of my joining strips to put these together. Now these joining strips in the cutting guide it tells you how to cut them. They are three quarters of an inch wide. They're scored in the middle at three eighths of an inch. And then a quarter inch score tape is placed on the outside of each of those long sides. And then this is just a simple butt join here. You can measure and cut one side and I'll do that. So I have this piece of joining strip cut to length. I'll remove the backing on one side and put it right on the edge of this piece and then I can remove the backing strip from the other side make a butt join and make sure this bottom edge is, is the corner here is together and then I'll pull this across and then I'll use my bone folder to burnish that join now I may not always remember to say to use the burn fold uh, sorry the bone folder to burnish the join but you should always remember to burnish every join as you make them and then I'll cut another piece and make this join on of this side the same way so now I have a unit like this and I'll repeat that using the other piece and the remaining two sides two angled sides so now I have these two units and I'll set one aside and I'll bring in my left and right pieces and I'm going to join them the same way to both sides of this unit. Next I'll add a joining strip to each one of these sides. So now I have this big unit and this smaller unit and I'm going to take the smaller unit and join it on one side here but I'm going to leave this all flat for now. So now we have this long flat unit and before we make it into a three-dimensional unit by making the final join we want to add what I call ledger strips 
and those will just help us put in some of our pieces that we will be using and these are in the cutting guide under miscellaneous they are cut one quarter inch wide by the length of the chipboard 12 inches and they have score tape along one side continually and what we will do on the bottom edge down here is we will cut some pieces that oh, are about an, an eighth of an inch short of the corners on each side so let me see I'll just measure this one right here and cut it so you can see I'll put it upside down here so you can see it a little better in um, the light and when we attach this we're going to hold it back a sixteenth of an inch the width of the chipboard from this edge now if you have a challenge uh, judging that sixteenth of an inch you can just take a spare piece of chipboard anything that you have even an extra a piece of the ledger strip and just put that down here on this bottom edge so that you can hold this piece back a sixteenth of an inch from that edge so I'm going to cut a little pieces that will fit in between each of these areas again just holding it back oh about an eighth of an inch from each side just so then when we turn the corners they won't be in the way and the only place uh, that you want to cut it slightly shorter is down here at the end we'll cut it about a half an inch shorter from this edge over here on the left so that there will be room for the joining strip to come in and fit there so I'll just cut this one because um, the joining strip is 3 8 so if I cut it about a half an inch then there will be plenty of room to make that join. So I'll just take each one of these and remove the backing and then either measure or judge that sixteenth of an inch uh, from the bottom edge and then put them in place and burnish so here you can see maybe that that is back my thumbnail comes in here that's that sixteenth of an inch right there so I'll repeat that along all these other pieces so I've got all the pieces installed and I just took a black marker to them just so that you would be able to see more easily that sixteenth of an inch that they're held back I've got that going along all of the bottom edge there now. So now we want to turn this around and we want to install two ledger strips on the top side. So now I've turned it around so I've got the top uh, edge facing me and on the two wide panels I'm going to draw a line a half an inch down from the top edge. A half an inch down from the top edge. So just line your ruler up on the half inch mark and draw a line across. Now that we have those lines drawn, we can cut some pieces of joining, um, I'm sorry, of ledger strip that are about an eighth of an inch shorter on each side. There's the length and I'm just measuring it about an eighth of an inch short on each side and I'll cut those. So I've cut these to length and I colored them black just so you could see them better. They're going to go right up against that line. So right on that line on both sides. And then once I have these two installed, I'll take my bone folder and burnish all of the ledger strips in place. And now that we have our ledger strips all in place, we can make this three-dimensional. I removed the tape backing from this side, and I'll just take these two edges and butt them up. I'll make sure that that bottom edge especially is in alignment down here and just continue this butt join all the way up and then I can flip it over and go on the inside and burnish that joint.
and now we have the body of the watering can. Next we'll work on our can base and it has been cut to a rectangular shape and obviously the can has uh, the corners. The corners would need to be cut off. So what we want to do is cut off, measure and cut off one and one sixteenth inch from each of these sides. Now you can either take a ruler that has one and one sixteenth on it or I'm going to use my mat and I'll just scooch it up here a little bit and zoom in so that you can see and I'm going to take each corner and line it up on my grid mat and then the these marks on my mat are an eighth of an inch apart so if I make a tick mark that is right in between two of them and after that inch mark now I've got it at one and one sixteenth and I can do that on the other side as well just come right in between the inch mark and the next one eighth inch mark and I'll repeat that so that I have tick marks, uh, two tick marks on each side and once you've made those two tick marks on each corner we're going to cut off the corner I like to put my craft knife right at where that tick mark is on the bottom and then I can use that as a pivot point to line up the top of my knife with the other mark and then I can cut across. Now I usually just go lightly to get that established and then go off several times to make that cut. And then that removes that corner. And I'll repeat that for the other corners, putting my craft knife in at the bottom tick mark and then pivoting to the top tick mark, going lightly at first and then completing the cut. Now that I've made those cuts, I'm going to take a couple pieces of uh, low tack tape, this is just painter's tape and I rip them off and I just put them on my jeans a couple times so they're even less tacky than before and I'll turn this over because we just want to do a dry fit and I'll put one end in and it should just rest on those ledger strips and then get those other two corners down there in use my fingernail or you might use, need to use the blade of a craft knife and this will be a tight fit here but it should fit in nicely all around sometimes it depends on how thick the paper is that you use to make the joining strips out of but there so now I've got a nice fit I think you can see all the way around so now that we've finished our test fit, we can run a bead of glue all the way around those ledger strips. And once we have that glue bead in, we can go ahead and insert our base and get it attached. And again, I'll just use my pieces of low tack tape here to help me get it in. And then I'll just set that aside to dry. So now that our base is dry, we can start doing the finishing on the body of the watering can. And I have cut some finishing strips. These are similar to the joining strips. They're three quarters of an inch wide, scored at three eighths. But the uh, score tape is on the inside this time. And I've picked this a color that coordinates with the paper line that I'm using. So I'm going to start by doing the verticals. And the verticals I'm going to have a squared off top up here at this edge. And then down at the bottom I'll first cut this to length. And then once I've cut it to length I'm going to miter that corner. So just cut that at 45 degrees and I'll go ahead and install that 
and I'll repeat that for all the other vertical edges. So now that I have all of the verticals, I'm going to do the base and I'll again cut it to length and then miter the corners so that I'll have a nice finish all the way around. And I'll just repeat that for each one of the edges. So now I have the finishing strips all along the bottom. I'm not going to put any around the top because we're going to have a band that comes around here. And so now we're ready to put uh, decorative paper on the sides. Now this is the paper I've selected to go on the body of the watering can and in the chipboard cutting guide it'll tell you the size of the pattern paper for these panels as well. Basically they're the same width as what we had when we did the chipboard but we're going to cut them instead of cutting them eight inches tall we'll cut them seven and three quarters inch tall and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a narrow and then this wide and a narrow and this shorter side out of one and then repeat that for the other so then the pattern kind of goes together but it's not necessary it just will look a little nicer so I'm going to cut those pieces and then we'll be back to do some additional uh, trimming to make them fit especially on these angled sides so I have my paper all cut out and I want to do some test fit of each piece. Obviously the angled pieces are going to need to be cut. And I'm just going to hold them up on here and what I want to see is just a little bit of blue uh, before each corner. And you may not like to have a reveal or there may be enough reveal. You can do it however you want then I'm going to uh, ink my edges with this is vintage photo I'm going to go around all of those edges and then I'll prep it with score tape and I'll show you how I'll do that as soon as I've inked my edges I've also put an arrow on the back side of the paper so that I know which side faces up so that my pattern will stay roughly in the same place now for score tape on these two on the left and right side I'm going to go around the edges with quarter inch and then I'm going to put a strip of one inch up the middle because the uh, spout gets attached to one side and the handle gets attached to the other so we want to have some good adhesion between our decorative paper and the chipboard so I'll go ahead and get that prepped so here's my paper all prepped and I should say if you don't have one inch score tape just put several pieces of quarter inch in the center here so that you'll have some good adhesion. And then when this goes on I'm going to hold it back a little bit from this bottom edge so I can see some blue there. Now you can see up here that there's a gap. That gap will be oh probably a little bit less than a quarter of an inch and that's fine because there's going to be a band that comes around the top there. So uh, just have a little bit of uh, reveal down here at the bottom. That'll look nice. And go ahead and attach that piece. Make sure you burnish it on well. The next piece I put on is going to be the next rectangular piece. I'm going to skip the angled side for right now. And I'll ink that and put score tape on that um, just like I did before. I'll probably put some pieces in the center. It doesn't have any structural components added to it, but the windows uh, will come in here. So you'll want to have either run some, a couple of pieces of score tape or some good other uh, sturdy adhesion, adhesive in the center of that panel as well. So here's my wide panel and I've got it prepped with the score tape and I'll go ahead and attach it again leaving that same amount of reveal at the bottom as I did on that other panel. And then I'll continue and do my other two rectangular panels. So now that we have all the rectangular 
paper put on, we can work on the angle pieces that we need. So I'm going to start by just cutting a, a, a scrap piece of cardstock and testing it out before I cut my decorative paper. So I'm going to do this the same way that I did the um, chipboard, where it's an inch and a half wide, so I'm going to put my centering ruler up here at the top, and I, will, I want to have it three quarters of an inch wide at the top, so I'll mark three eighths of an inch on either side of center. And then I can connect these uh, tick marks to the corners on the bottom and cut out a template. So here's my template, and I'm just going to take it and try it on each of my sides and see how that's going to work. Uh, now I want to have that little bit of blue reveal, so I'm just going to go around and try it on each side. And remember, you don't care what's happening up here at the top. But hold it back that same distance from the bottom as your rectangular sides. And for me, this will, this will work fine. So I'm going to cut my decorative paper and do it the same way, measuring in uh, at the top so that it's three quarters of an inch wide and cutting it so that it's the same shape that I just did for the cardstock. So here's one of my angled sides. I cut off these two triangles. I've inked the edges and for score tape I'm just going on the, the edges and nothing needs to go in the middle. So I'll put this side on and then I will repeat that for my other three sides. Next we'll work on the trim that will go around the top of the can body and in the cutting guide under the lightweight chipboard there are two pieces that are cut half inch wide and it says that they should be bendy along their length. All right, so it's just bendy. Use the cut it on your chipboard so it's bendy. And then also in the cardstock cutting guide, there are two pieces that are one and one eighth inches wide, and they get scored at the half an inch and five eighths, and that creates a little uh, one eighth inch channel down the middle and then I prep these with 3 8 inch score tape and I'm holding it fairly close to the to the edge um, it doesn't have to go right along the edges but fairly close to it so uh, and then I've also got a marker um, this one happens to coordinate because I've got a set of Copics but um, you can just use any dark color that's close to this um, just in case any of the you don't get your chipboard pieces exactly covered. So I'm going to start by coloring the bottom edge of my strips of chipboard and just coming up a little bit along that one edge too. I'll do that on the other one. And once I have those colored I'm going to flip them over and put some 3 8 inch score tape on the back. So let's just do a little dry fit here so we can see how this is going to go. It's going to always stay flush with the top edge here, but because we have a slant here on our sides, when it gets to these slanted sides, it's going to have to come away from the box a little bit and won't be able to st stick down. But you'll want to keep it just as close to the box as you can and keep the edges even here on the top on the rectangular sides. So start about two thirds of the way over so I'm just going to start peeling back my score tape backing here and get this attached about there. Give that a good burnish on and then Pull this along, keeping this top edge over here flush, but bringing it as close in 
on this section as you can. So I've just pulled it on. Now it's smooth sailing for a while because it's just rectangular. And I'll get rid of the rest of that score tape and just kind of pull it around that edge. And I'm going to trim this back just a little bit. I want this to be about an inch back from that edge. Now you can come you can come and give it a little squeeze in the corners but it may not attach very well. And then we'll take our other piece and we'll start where we left off here. I don't know if I said this to begin with, but that you can see that the green stripe or the colored stripe is going to face down. And we'll butt these up exactly together there. Give it a good burnish and pull it around the corner, keeping that top edge nice and straight. And then continue along. And when you get over here to this end, you want to don't fasten this side until you see how long it needs to be so you can trim it off. You don't want to have any overlap there. So I just made a tick mark and then I'll trim it with my scissors. It could be just a hair shorter. and then give everything a really good burnish. Now what we're going to do is finish this edge with this piece of cardstock. It should go, this is a half an inch here you remember, and this is a half an inch on the side so it should come right down to the top of that ledger strip on each side. And this, and this outside was a half an inch, so when we put it over here, it should come right to the bottom of this strip of lightweight chipboard. Now when we start it, if our join for the lightweight chipboard is over here, we want to start our cardstock on the other third. And we're going to do it on the outside, and we'll just line up the bottom edge now with the bottom edge of the chipboard. So I'm going to just pull this backing away a little bit at a time. And line that up so it's along the bottom edge of that chipboard. Keep coming along. coming along there. And before you attach this last part here, see how mine's coming pretty close there? I'm going to trim this back to about, so it's coming over about an inch. And I'll try to make a nice um, straight cut there. And then I'll put that down and we'll give this all a good burnish at the end and then we'll take our other piece and we'll start that one just where that other one left off and work our way around And again, when I get to this end, I won't attach it down till I can measure it for length. I'll just make some tick marks here. And I can draw a line 
You can put your uh, some some backing back behind here so nothing sticks prematurely. Make another tick mark, draw a line and cut that off. And now that we've got that bottom part on, we can give that a good burnish. Next we're going to make some release cuts and we're going to come straight like kind of like this and point your scissors exactly at that um, join in the box. So come straight down and just put your scissor tip right against that uh, piece of chipboard so it'll, it, it'll cut all the way down to the chipboard. And we'll do that for each intersection. So after you made those cuts and before you take off the backing, we're just going to train this to go where we want it to go. So I'm going to take my my corners first and push them down and then take my sides and we want that to be nice and tight and again it should come right down to that ledger strip and when you get to these corners just make sure you get you burnish really well into those corners. So I'm going to start by taking off the backing on each of the four corners and pulling that down to the inside. So I'll do that for the other corners. And now that I have the corners, I can do each one of the sides and I'll make sure that to give it a good push as it comes over the edge, especially on these parts so it'll come all the way down to the top of that uh, ledger strip there. And now take your bone folder and go along the top, so just gently at a kind of a, a steep angle, see how much of an angle I have here, so you get a nice crisp edge along the top there. And then take your bone folder and go along this inside and make sure you go into these creases really well in the corners. You want to do a really good job with your bone folder because the lid, there's a lid that fits down inside of here and so you don't want to uh, risk um, pulling up the edges of this paper. And we will eventually put a strip of decorative paper along the edge here but frankly I haven't decided um, what I want to use yet so we'll just wait for that. So that completes the watering can body.